We're going to talk about pyramids and cones and their volume and their base area. This is Lesson 23D. And as always, I have links in the description to help you. And I've said this a couple times before, they're going to give you a sheet of paper that has formulas on it. It's going to be able to help you during the test. And they don't have to be memorized, but you, know, you have to know how to use them. Pyramids and cones have only one base. A triangular pyramid has a triangular base. A square pyramid has a square base. A pentagonal pyramid has a pentagon base, and so on. Depends on the polygon base. The base tells us how many triangular faces the pyramid should have. So this is called a net. It's when you unfold the 3D shape. We can see the base is here, and each of these are faces. And if we folded them together, we'd make a pyramid. See? You can actually find these if you search online and type in net of triangular pyramid or net of a cone, and you'd be able to go to images and print those and cut them out and play with them. Okay? A cone has a circle as its base. So that's the net of a cone. This folds up, and these fold in, and it makes a cone. See? So here's the cone. You can see the circle base. Here's a square pyramid. It's got a square base. Here's a triangular pyramid. It's got a triangle base. And at the very, very top, they've got a vertex, the pointy part on top. This is an edge. That's an edge. There's an edge in the back. These are the faces. There's a face in the back. You can see the base. Here the base is a circle for the cone. Its height goes from the very, very center all the way up to the vertex. We can see the radius going to the center to the edge. And this is its slant height. The slant height, if we were to take it and stand it up, it would be longer than that height. And actually, that's the slant height for the pyramid. See? We can use the same basic formula to find the volume of a pyramid or a cone. It's the same formula for both. We have V equals one-third AH. That means we're going to multiply the area of the base, that's the A, times the height. And the height is that perpendicular line that goes from the center of the base straight up to the top to the vertex. But the formulas to find the area of a base are different. We just learned that the area of a triangle is square or a circle. They're different formulas. So for a triangular pyramid, it has a triangle base, so we find the area of a triangle. A equals half base height. For a square pyramid, the definition of a square is all the sides of the same length, so it's going to be side times side, S squared. For the area of a circle, we use pi r squared. Once we find the area of the base, which we substitute in here, then we multiply it by its height, and we find a third of that. Instead of multiplying it by a third, we're going to divide by three, and I'll show you that in a second. This means we're using two formulas to find the volume. We're using the area of the base formula, and then we're using the volume formula. What is the volume of this square pyramid to the nearest centimeter? So that right there tells you we're going to have to round it, aren't we? Well, the base is 8 centimeters here, 8 centimeters here. Well, it's 8 all the way around. It's the definition of a square. The height is a 6. So in our formula, we're going to multiply it by 6 for the height, aren't we? Since this is an 8, we're going to do side times side, which is 8 squared, which is a 64. We put that 64 in for where the A is supposed to be. We do 64 times 6 and get 384. And we divide it by 3 instead of multiplying it by a third because with decimals, one third is 0.33333 and it keeps going on and on and on. So it's not very accurate for us to multiply. It's easier and more accurate for us to just divide this by 3. When it says one-third times something, that means they want a third of it. They want us to split this 384 into three parts, and they want one of the parts. So let's just divide it by three. It's easier, quicker. We'll get 128 centimeters cubed. And we have cubic centimeters because that's how many cubes would fill up the volume inside of here. This, 8 times 8, is square measure because we're doing length times width or side times side. That's two measures. As soon as we're doing cubic to fill up the volume, we have a little 3 exponent, don't we? Now we can combine these formulas. Instead of putting an A here, 
because the area of the base of a square pyramid is s squared, we could put that in to this formula. And if it's easier for you to keep it separate, then keep it separate. But if it asks you which formula would solve this problem, know in your heart that instead of A, you could put the S squared there, because that's area of the base of a square pyramid, or whatever the area of the base formula would be, okay? What is the volume of this cone to the nearest inch? So we can see that it's got a height of 8 inches and a radius of 4. So the area of the base, the circle, is going to be pi r squared for the circle. Now because we're using pi, it's going to be approximate, isn't it? So we're going to have the radius is a 4, so we have 4 times 4, which is a 16. We multiply that by the 3.14 and get 50.24. Now we can put that 50.24 in place of that a, area of the base. We multiply 50.24 times 8 and get 401.92. And we don't want to multiply it by 0.33 because it's not very accurate. So, accurate. so we're just going to divide it by 3. And we come up with 133.97 and then the 3's keep repeating. But we want it to the nearest inch. The nearest inch, the 9 tells the 3 to go up to a 4. So we have the nearest inch as 134 inches cubed. See? So just remember, you don't want to multiply by 0.33 with the calculator. You want to just divide it by 3. It'll be quicker, all right? And we can combine these formulas. Instead of the A here, the area of the base of this circle is pi r squared, so that would be the formula to solve for the volume of that cone. They might ask you that on the test. And it'll give you a choice of different formulas, and it'll say which one will find the volume of this cone. Well, know that the A can be replaced with the pi r squared, okay? A triangular pyramid has a base area of 3 inches and a height of 6 inches. Which equation will find the volume? Well, you know what? If you read this carefully, it's a triangular pyramid and it's telling us the base area is 3 inches. That means it already gave us A. So we could just plug that into the formula. So it wouldn't be half because that's not the formula. It would be this one. The volume would be one-third times that three-inch base times six. So number five, they already gave us the base area of three inches. It would probably say cubic inches. We just put the three in for the A. See? All right? Now this one says cone A has a base radius of three inches and a height of five inches. Cone B has a base radius of five inches and a height of three inches. Which cone has more volume? Is it A, B, both are the same, neither, or not enough information is given? And you would look at this and say, oh, there's a 3 and a 5, and there's a 5 and a 3. It's the same. And you'd think that you would answer this one and go on to the next question, but you'd be wrong. This is tricky. Cone A. Let's do the... It's a cone, so it's got a circle base. So let's do the area of the base. It's pi r squared. So it had a 3-inch radius. So we're going to do 3 times 3, which is 9. We multiply that by pi and we get 28.26. Then when we put the 28.26 in place of the A, we multiply this times the height 5 and get 141.3. We divide it by 3 and get 47.1 cubic inches. The base area of B would be 5 squared. So that would be a 25. We multiply that by pi and get 78.5. We put that 78.5 into the volume formula. Now remember, it's got a height of 3 inches. Now, here's what I did. Here's the 1 third times the area of the base times the 3 inch height. But 3 can be written as a 3 over 1, can't it? And if we can multiply in any order, we can multiply this one and this one first. And we get 1 times 3 is 3 for the numerator. And 3 times 1 is 3 for the denominator. So we have a 3 over a 3. Well, that's a 1. So we got... We've got 78.5 times 1. So that would give us 78.5 cubic inches. You could do it the slow way and multiply these two together to get this and divide it by 3, but you're still going to get the 78.5 cubic inches. So B is the correct answer. This one has more volume than A. B is the correct answer. Now there's actually even a quicker way to solve this. All right? When we look at this formula, this is A, right? It's pi r squared, and the radius was 3, and this one had a radius of 5. 
if you look at the back end of this, because we these are all multiplication. These are all being multiplied to each other. If you just look at the back end of this, and we multiply these first, we'd get 3 times 3 is 9 times 5 is 45. And for this one, we get 25 times 3, which is 75. And they're both being multiplied by pi and one-third. So that one is going to be bigger. So look at it this way. We've got 3 squared times 5, which is 45, and we got 5 squared times 3, which is 75. They're both being multiplied by the same thing. The one that starts out bigger being multiplied by that is going to still be bigger, isn't it? So you could just look at it that way and go faster, all right? You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 281. And we've talked about the area of a 2D surface, like the area of a triangle, a circle, a rectangle. We did all that. Now we've talked about the volume, how many cubic inches it could hold. So we're going to discuss the surface area of a 3D shape, like all the surfaces, the four triangular sides and the square bottom, that's surface area. We're going to talk about that in Lesson 26, okay? Our next lesson, we're going to talk about converting measurements. So to convert cubic inches to cubic feet or cubic feet to cubic yards, that's the next lesson. This Algebra 1, 3.7, I put that into the GED playlist. If you haven't seen it, there's going to be a link in this description. It talked about how to rearrange a formula to solve for one of the different letters. And then I've got all these different volume videos that you can watch, even some from geometry and some from my algebra word problem playlist. And of course, I'm going to have links to the previous videos for this applying formulas lesson 23 that we've done. Okay. So just remember, you are in the seat, the driver's seat of your life. You have the steering wheel. It's up to you on where you're going to drive and how you're going to, what direction you're going to go. All right. Don't give away that driver's seat and steering wheel to somebody else, all right? I'm proud of you. Keep going, and I'll see you next video. Bye.